What is going on, guys? No, go back to your other one. I don't think it's that. It's something to do with Skype. Give me one second. All right. Try talking now. Okay. I'm talking now. Uh, anything? Do, do, do. Well, that's can no fun. Can anybody hear me? We can, we can hear. hear. You uh, can hear now. All right. Okay. Hello, everyone. Perfect. From the top. What's going on, guys? Welcome to the Wednesday Night Live stream. Um, today, we're going to talk about turning your hobby into a business and kind of the offshoot of that is doing something around aquarium maintenance. Now, Chris, you've been in the aquarium maintenance business for about 20 years now. Um, so how did, first of all, actually, how did you get into doing this in the first place? Um, it's been a long time coming. Um, you can probably see some gray hairs. I've been actually a hobbyist, lifelong hobbyist since the seventies. And, uh, and I've got, uh, I got fired about 20 years ago from a tech job, mm -hmm. um, and uh, I just happened across a, uh, a want ad for an aquarium service company that was looking for somebody to scrub algae, and I figured, mm -hmm. hey, I know something about aquariums, and uh, so I answered that, and I actually worked for them for a good number of years, and then I moved to a different city, and... Uh, started working in a retail store or just selling fish. I was actually managing the, uh, the saltwater fish room mm -hmm. and doing all the purchasing. And that kind of led into getting a few service clients. And, uh, and then it got to the point where I was, it, it was actually costing me money to go to the job. <laughs> and, You're losing uh, money. Yeah. It's like opportunity cost. Yeah. And so, you know, I kind of went all, all in 2009 uh, and have been basically full time algae scrubbing, self employed since then. Uh, nice. And, uh, yeah. And here we are. And I have also, I should also mention, I have a, a background in, well, I have a long, lifelong history of turning my hobbies into jobs. My mm -hmm. tech job that I had was in the, the uh, in the photography industry. Mm -hmm. And that came from being interested in photography. So moved from photography nice. into fish keeping as far as a job goes. And all through that, because I've always worked in my interests, I've also developed a big background in, in adult education. And I basically have always taught everything that I've done. Mm -hmm. And uh, and here we are. With, nice. COVID, with COVID, I sat around for a little while twiddling my thumbs wondering, what am I going to do? Uh, mm -hmm. So I started kind of reassessing a lot of things with my business. Mm -hmm. And uh, and it kind of led me to, to this and kind of putting, putting together a little bit of a plan to help other people get into doing what I'm doing and kind of getting, thinking about retirement now. And I really, uh, <laughs> if, if yeah. I don't... Uh, continue expanding my service business, whatever. I'm <laughs> mm -hmm. Now, when you, okay, so you've done the same thing, right? You, you take your hobby, you're like, okay, how can I make money off my hobby, right? Like I basically have an educational YouTube channel. It. You started to maintain other systems and tanks. Do you find that once you turn to business, is it still feel like you, a hobby that you love or is it become more work after a certain point? It changes for sure. Um, uh, I now, uh, you know, as I say, I've been keeping aquariums since the 70s, so I don't know how many mm -hmm. decades that is. I now have no personal aquariums. Mm -hmm. But I have a job that's like kind of like work, mm -hmm. but it's fun. Yeah, you uh, enjoy it. Yeah, like I don't ever have a day where I wake up and I say, oh, I don't want to go to work unless it's a day I'm going into the office to do bookkeeping or something. That's, that's a lot mm -hmm. like work. And as yeah. long as they can keep like the, the actual aquarium stuff separate from the, the marketing and the administrative stuff and especially the bookkeeping, you'll hear me complain about the bookkeeping probably a lot in the next little while. Yep. Uh, so for me in the aquariums, the aquariums have actually continued to be a, not so much a hobby, but an interest. Like I'm personally interested in them. I'm personally invested in, in my clients and their enjoyment of the hobby. And mm -hmm. basically I go to work every day and 
I talk to people about their fish tanks and their hobby that they love or, you know, talk to business owners or the office managers or whatever about what the aquarium is doing to benefit them. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's pretty cool. It's turned more from a fish keeping hobby into like a relationship environment where I'm kind of always dealing with people that are, uh, um, you know, interested in one way or another with what I enjoy doing. So yeah, that's pretty cool. The photography, I don't, I still have all of my professional cameras. Mm -hmm. I haven't actually taken the time to actually make a photo in. It's been a while. <laughs> well, now yeah. you have a good excuse to take nice photos of all these client tanks and be like, boom, look at all these awesome tanks I maintain. Yeah, well, just on a quick note, kind of jumping ahead here, but uh, mm -hmm. photography in, in this, as far as advertising this as a business, photography is, is a huge uh, skill, like having uh, really stunning photos of, of fish and and also of the tanks that you do is, is very important for imparting the the idea that you know you're of what you can do mm -hmm. and uh, nice yeah now now okay so if someone is intrigued by this idea they're thinking okay i could i could turn my hobby in this i'd like to make money doing this every day what what would kind of be like the first steps of someone wanting to bridge into starting their own maintenance company um i think that the first Thing, like let's talk about why people fail at starting okay. a aquarium service company to kind of give it some perspective mm -hmm. and the like this is and I've been through it a number of times with a number of hobbies is that you're getting into it because you love what you do it doesn't necessarily make you a good business person and now I think that I've been through it like three, four times in my life that uh, I kind of got a little bit of a, you know, a, a head start. Mm -hmm. But uh, anyway, it's, it's, I think that a lot of people fail at starting an aquarium service company because they don't know their business numbers. And this is going to mm -hmm. put a whole bunch of people to sleep if you're coming in here thinking we're going to be talking about pretty fish and protein skimmers and tax stuff. Um it's like you've got to know where you are financially in the business mm -hmm. all the time. And if things are trending one way or trending the other way, you've got to know what a profit and loss statement is, balance sheets, you know, cost of acquisition for a new customer and all of that kind of stuff. And this is, I should preface this, that this is if somebody's wanting to actually make this into a business. Yeah. And it's it's very viable for people that are just interested in, you know, making a little spare cash or helping to pay for the, you know, having their hobby and their knowledge of the hobby helping to pay for part of their their hobby. You can do this on a very small scale um, part time casually. Yeah, that's actually it, a very good point. And you right? don't like get, he... and you don't have to make it into like what I've done where I've got, you know, the tax man knocking at my door and employees and and all of that uh, you know if you just wanted to start out small and get a couple of service clients that's not a huge goal to achieve and you know if you can make a little bit of money you don't have to make it overly complicated mm -hmm. but the uh, um, where were we before I started into that little <laughs> rant about well, part time <laughs> I, I guess that's a good point though, right? There's two different levels. Do you have, you know, the side hustle where it's just your little side gig, some extra cash, or is it your full out, you know, I'm replacing my job. This is my full-time business. Yeah. There's actually more levels than that. I actually, mm -hmm. I actually made a list of them like, <laughs> like an hour ago. So people that just want to pay for some fish food, you know, you can do this very casually. Uh, the only real stumbling block that I'll caution you with is insurance. Mm -hmm. Right. It, like the liability in doing this kind of thing is it's there. Thankfully, mm -hmm. it's, you know, you, you're when you're in that situation it's very, very rare. But, uh, you know, having insurance is certainly a, a big thing. And, and the insurance company don't really care if you're only making, you know, two hundred and fifty dollars a week or a month. Mm -hmm. You know, they're 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 barrier for entry into getting an insurance policy to do this is 
you know, I'm paying right now, I think a little bit over $2,000 a year just for liability insurance for the aquarium business. And mm -hmm. uh, that hasn't really gone up much from the time that I was making, uh, you know, a thousand dollars a month or $10,000 a month. The insurance is the same. So doing it part time okay. with insurance is, uh, that's the biggest stumbling block that I would caution people with. Now, at what point is it worth getting insurance to cover yourself? When you walk in a client's door. Yeah. Any client. Okay. Uh, so. Now, everybody can take that with a grain of salt. And, you know, if you're okay with the risk. Uh, but uh, generally speaking, you're going to be going into either businesses or fairly affluent people's homes. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, if you cause something to happen that causes a $50,000 renovation, and, uh, they'll come after you. And, really? Yeah. Uh, we can talk about insurance a little bit more um, down, you know, in the conversation because it's, um, it's a big, it's a big deal, especially if you're going to, you know, make, make this into a business. But so mm -hmm. if you're not a business or an corporation or whatever, they're coming after your, your personal assets. Uh, yeah, so I guess that's a sketchy it'll, part. It'll, it'll bankrupt you. Now, could someone have some kind of a contract being like, you put this box of water in, it's your own risk, I'm just making it look pretty? Yeah. The, uh, uh, yeah, basically an acknowledgement of risk. And it, an acknowledgement of risk is different than a liability waiver. Like a lot of people think that, you know, get around the insurance thing by just having them sign something. Say, if I anything happens to your house because of the aquarium, you know, I'm not responsible. Mm -hmm. Well, the court is going to say you're responsible. And there, it doesn't matter if they've signed a waiver. Mm -hmm. So the, the ideal is that you don't end up in court. Right. <laughs> yes, <laughs> that you've Why explained to the client that you know you're, you know you're deciding to put 250 gallons of salt water in your living room, mm -hmm. in a in a breakable glass box. Yeah, you know, shit happens, and and it also tell them that you know, thankfully it happens extraordinarily rarely, but mm -hmm. uh, you know you're just aware of the risk and that I'm just a little small potato coming in to scrub the algae and you know if this ends up with a $50,000 renovation I'm not the guy to look for to pay for it but, yeah but uh, and then the other thing is people say that you know just incorporate the business and then you're you're separated from your personal assets but you know all you're doing is trying to get around just having insurance and having insurance is the responsible thing to do you know, yep. you're, you're doing something, you mess something up and, uh, you know, just accept their responsibility. It's a professional business thing to do. Oh. All right. So, that, so that's yeah. the biggest thing to really worry about at the end of the day and make sure you have it. Yeah. I was wanting to talk more about the doom and gloom of it towards the end of the conversation <laughs> before we like. All right. Okay. Kind of okay. Poo -poo so, and everything. Starting at the business. I, I mean, the basics. Okay. So. Okay. So we're like. Talking about so casual people just wanting to do it. You can you can make some money uh, mm -hmm. to help your hobby along, and then there's people that want to make actually make income on a part time basis, and you know they're going to need to and maybe grow that into a, a larger business. That's kind of what I did, you know, I started when I was working at an aquarium store, and uh, uh, and just taking on clients gradually and most of the avenues into the business are going to be very gradual. Mm -hmm. So the, if you think you're going to, uh, you know, jump into it with both feet and go full time right off the bat, you're going to need a lot of money behind you. Like theoretically, I guess it could be done, mm -hmm. but you're going to need to pay yourself and support your family or whatever until such a time as you can build a roster of clients that are, replacing your income yep and then and then you're basically self-employed you're creating your own job at that, mm -hmm. that point and which is you know a lot of people especially if you're doing something that's uh you're, you're passionate about is uh, uh is a great position to be in and then also just on the business categories and then you know beyond being self-employed full-time there's running a business 
Mm-hmm. And there's a distinction between being uh, self-employed and running a business. Basically, the distinction is the business you can walk away from mm-hmm. for a short period of time and it will still function. Yeah. And uh, that's prior to COVID. That was kind of like what I was tinkering with. Mm-hmm. My goal by the end of 2020 was to be off the road and mm-hmm. only doing special projects and whatnot. And, you know, COVID's kind of put a damper on that. And now I'm doing all of the road work, which yeah. wasn't wasn't in the plan, but um, COVID is like kind of upended everybody's plans, I think. Yep. Got to gotta work with what you got. Okay. Question in the chat. What's your average maintenance term for clients? Is it weekly, bi-weekly, monthly? How often do you normally go and maintain a system? Um, I don't do, I've got, this is coming, I'm just, you know, acknowledging that I'm talking to reef people here. Mm-hmm. Weekly t- maintenance on a, on a reef tank is going to be more frequent than uh, any other type of aquarium, say for maybe live planted aquariums, like proper live planted aquariums. And mm-hmm. I've got, I don't know, maybe a dozen reef aquariums that we maintain, but none of them are complicated. They're all like, you know, really colorful, mm-hmm. softies, uh, easy LPS. There's nothing that really is, you know, very sensitive and, uh, yep. and takes a lot of, you know, regular maintenance. So I would say yeah. probably the most popular is a two week cycle. Okay. And I basically run into our, like our whole schedule and like the dispatching runs in two week cycles. And I actually find that the weekly clients, although they're, they're great on paper, they actually mm-hmm. complicate the dispatching because, yeah. you know, then I've got to be back to that neighborhood every week on that day. And, mm-hmm. you know, to, they're rooting around around the city is uh, is kind of tough. So I would say most of them, probably 60% of our clients are every two weeks. And okay. then four weeks is pretty common for a lot of the, the uh, fresh water. Mm-hmm. And then I've got some clients that are, you know, every eight weeks or they just call me whenever. I have a few clients that are actually like on a regular six month. Yeah. And we're basically, they're doing the work. I'm just coming in and doing like, you know, tearing everything, uh, like doing a big, a big overhaul mm-hmm. and doing a little bit of an assessment and guiding them for the next six months. So, nice. Uh, but, you nice. know, they're, for the most part, they're doing their own water changes and filter cleaning. Yeah. So, okay. So every two weeks is the most common. Then you'll have a bit of a mix of everything after that. Now with... I guess the other question is, what would be the main difference? Like, are you doing the same thing you do to maintain your own tank, or is there a whole different kind of like set of stuff you do for a customer's tank? Um, no, it's all the yeah. same. It, yep. But you know, picture your aquarium, like the aquariums that you're taking care of. For the most part, you're not dealing with hobbyists. Mm-hmm. Um, and we'll talk about target markets and customers and whatnot in a little bit. But uh, you're just picture the situation, especially with the reef tanks and you guys will all know, you know, how often you're tinkering with your reef tank daily. (laughs) Well, yeah. Well, just pretend that you put that tank behind a glass door and Mm -hmm. you lock the door and you can only open the door once a week or once every two weeks. So you'd only have access to the aquarium every two weeks, Mm -hmm. you know, and that's how the systems are built. So they're a little bit different than, than, you know, what you guys would be dealing with as far as uh, um, doing any sort of maintenance goes. Because mm-hmm. there's, unless I've got a really keen customer, they uh, they want to do as little as possible other than just sit and look at their, their fish. Yeah. So I guess, like, one point you're talking about, like, the easy and the softy tanks, all that stuff, like, as a maintenance perspective, that's probably the ideal tank, right? You don't want someone that's going for all these tricky, hard corals. You want something that's nice and easy. It's going to look good all the time. Less yeah, to worry about. I'm, I'm at the point now where if I get the sense on an initial phone call or an email that somebody's like a hobbyist that just gotten busy, I'll mm-hmm. actually try to like not 
deal with them. Uh, that's <laughs> 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 I know that's kind of a, a shit thing to say. Pardon. Am I allowed to swear here? Yeah. Probably YouTube, some YouTube policy. Uh, um, okay, as long as it's not too crazy. So, what was the question? Sorry. Um, oh, I guess it, it's probably more ideal to have tanks. Like, you know, if it's a saltwater tank, you're probably better off with, like, you know, some softies, oh, yeah. a few LPS, than, like, an outdoor yeah, yeah, yeah. tank that's going to be... Yeah, easy, easy stuff. Because the, the clients don't know the difference for the most part. Like, a, mm -hmm. like, especially if you think about an office environment. Generally speaking, there'll be somebody in the company that at some point thought it was a good idea to have an aquarium in the office. Mm -hmm. That person may not even work there anymore, but the aquarium's there, and I'm very rarely dealing with the person that's interested in aquariums. I'm dealing with the office manager and the accounting department. Yep. So, you know, those are, those are good, simple, because it's simple contracts, because basically what I say goes. Like, mm -hmm. you know, if they need a piece of equipment, I just put the piece of equipment in and I send them an invoice. I don't have to explain, like, a lot of residential clients or, mm -hmm. you know, obvious, you'll have to explain why and to look about look at different options. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. That makes sense. Yeah, so, simple, and they don't know the difference, you know, between some kind of rare hybrid this or that or just a yellow tank. Yeah. Uh, you know, all they want is colorful, vibrant fish for the most part, you know, I'm speaking mm -hmm. in generalities, you know, they don't know the difference between, you know, hammer coral and some exotic rainbow neon SPS coral. Yep. Colorful sticks, I call them. Mm -hmm. uh, Sounds right. So, yeah, I mean, all they know is that they have coral in the tank and the coral are healthy and they look good and they're swaying back and forth. People love movement. Mm hmm unless they're a hobbyist that are doing it to, to get familiar with a particular type of coral or fish. Yep. And, uh, yeah, a lot of the rare stuff and the stuff you don't see in the hobby very often, in all honesty, it's for a hobbyist, it's a challenge to keep it. And that's part of the hobby. Mm -hmm. Whereas in my thing, like anything that's a challenge is going to make the company, the maintenance company look bad mm -hmm. because if they have to do more work, to feed this thing or you know if it just continually is not healthy and looking good then you hear about it and that's when you get the phone calls yeah no that's fair okay Th this is an interesting question and i'm gonna assume that most people wouldn't even know this to ask this but someone's asking do customers ever get worried about cross-contamination of using tools like vacuums in several tanks mm -hmm. some of them will have their own like mm -hmm. and like we'll provide it. i'll sell them like a full maintenance kit Mm -hmm. um, and I actually just went through a big round of that at the start of COVID because people still wanted their aquariums maintained. And it wasn't about cross-contaminating the aquarium. It's cross-contaminating this damn virus. They just mm -hmm. didn't want anything that wasn't absolutely necessary coming into their house or their office. Yep. So I sold a whole bunch of, uh, like, full kits, like, you know, mixing buckets, pumps, all of that. Uh, the pythons, everything they need. And uh, I didn't actually realize until starting do, to do that in April how much the stuff that I use actually costs. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I was thinking, yeah, you know, 250, 300 bucks. But mm -hmm. then I'm like, you know, sending them invoices for 600, $800 for their maintenance equipment that I carry around in the back of my car. Yeah. Uh, so as far as cross contaminating the tanks, if. A customer is going into a pet store and buying their own fish. I will mm -hmm. not use my equipment. Okay. If they're getting the the livestock from us, mm -hmm. there's a little bit less of a thing because I know where it's coming from. I keep it in the office. Um, so I, I'm pretty sure that it's healthy. Mm -hmm. And also with saltwater tanks, everything that we use in a tank that we're taking to another client, it basically gets left in the mixing bin, mm -hmm. and it gets a big freshwater bath in between appointments. Okay. Uh, so there's a little bit of sensitivity to that. And if somebody's really concerned about it, or if they've got some like really questionable stuff, then I just won't do it. Uh, okay. They've got to get their own their own stuff that will provide. Like I don't want them going to a pet store and buying, you know, the Aquion version of the Python or. You know, mm -hmm. some other like the hydrometer instead of the the 
salinity checker that we use. Like I don't, uh, I don't let the clients really kind of dictate anything to do with the maintenance yeah. of the tank. This is what you need. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And most of them, that's fine because again, mm-hmm. they're, I'm not dealing with, with, uh, with people that have been in the hobby. Uh, mm-hmm. and generally the people that I have got to a point in their life where now they're running a business and they have employees and they understand the, you know, just hire an expert to do whatever job you have and let yep. them do your job. It makes sense, right? Cause we're the hobbyist level is going to be much more hardcore and digging is something where most people just want to look pretty. They don't care to mm-hmm. just make it look good, make things happy. Make yeah, it healthy generally, happy. they're happy. Generally I find when we have hobbyists call us, It'll be a hobbyist that has had something happen in their life that just ha- they don't have the time anymore. So mm-hmm. they've gotten more successful with their career, sucking up a lot of their time, their aquarium suffering, or they've had kids. This is like a really popular one mm-hmm. where, you know, having an aquarium, especially when you have young kids around, is awesome mm-hmm. for the kids. Yep. But then, you know, now maybe they're you know, their, their work situation, like one person's at home and the other person's working more hours. And, uh, so that's really the two reasons that I find that we get hobbyists calling us for, for help. And they generally have a pretty clear idea of what they need done. Mm-hmm. They just need somebody to do it because they don't have the time. That's fair. Now, do you find you have more businesses or more people with this, like a nice tank in their home? Like right now, find... it's, right now I'm running maybe 50, 50 commercial versus residential, probably a little more business. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's changed over the years. It's come, become more and more business. And, and I think that anybody that's starting into this will find the same thing if they're getting clients through a pet store. Mm hmm. Because the clients that you get through a pet store are more often than not residential. Makes sense. Uh, whereas, so, you know, a business, you know, you think about somebody, they want an aquarium in the, in the lobby of their thing. And somebody, some manager will just tell the office manager or the, the you know, the admin assistant, just go find somebody to install an aquarium. And mm-hmm. they generally don't go to a pet store. They go to Google. And yep. just type in aquarium installation company. So G- Google is really your friend if you're actually trying to build and promote a business because that's where most of the companies, most people will be Google. looking. That or store referrals, I guess. Yeah, Google, Google, Google. Uh, mm-hmm. It takes a while for Google because you, like, mm-hmm. you launch a website today and you put a bunch of stuff that it's going to recognize as aquarium related content. It'll take a while for that to rank anywhere where people are going to realistically find it, but mm-hmm. they've got, they, Google is like Google for small businesses is an awesome resource. Like they have more than just the search engine. They have all kinds of tools that small businesses that can use. And we can do like a whole, you know, a week long webinar on just using Google stuff. Mm-hmm. Uh, so what was the actual question here? I don't remember anymore. Uh, okay. So what, okay, here, here's another good one. Um, yeah. like how advanced or how good of a hobbyist would you have to be to, to have like the basic skill set to start doing something like this? When I'm hiring somebody, mm-hmm. I want them to know enough about keeping aquariums that they can have an, a, an intelligent and a confident conversation with a client. Mm-hmm. And if you're going to start a company, then you're, uh, uh, sorry, I've got the, the dogs, <laughs> the dogs doing their thing again. Uh, if you're going to start a company, you obviously need to know a little more about that and you need to have like a good, well-rounded knowledge of aquariums, unless you're going to specialize just in reef tanks or just in freshwater tanks. And I see it like I see on, on Kijiji or Craigslist, people putting up. Uh, little classified ads saying special I specialize in freshwater aquariums what that means to me is you don't know anything about anything <laughs> else that's valuable Probably. Uh, so you want to have a good well-rounded knowledge you don't have to be like a super expert but you have to have a basic knowledge or not a basic knowledge but like a good 
solid knowledge of how aquarium systems operate, water chemistry, fish husbandry, uh, and and mechanical ability as well, which mm-hmm. is being able to you know do be Mister Fix It. Yep. Uh, and yeah, no. as I say, I mean you don't have to be you don't have to have a degree in any of this. You don't have to be an expert mm-hmm. in anything, but you do have to be confident. Any situation that you're selling yourself into, any type yep. of uh, of aquarium system that you're taking on as a client, you should be very confident that you can deal with anything that that system will generate for you to deal with. Mm-hmm. So okay. I don't know if that's a good answer to the question, but it's an important question. Yeah, it definitely is. Because your like the the services that you, like your service products are going to be based on the answer to that question. Mm-hmm. You know, if you've got a good, well-rounded knowledge of like all kinds of different aquariums chances are very quickly you could be servicing pretty much any type of aquarium but if you're pigeonholed into reef keeping i'm actually Mm -hmm. working with a fellow right now that uh, is like super expert um at at the saltwater stuff and reef keeping Mm -hmm. he's actually finding the freshwater stuff more challenging really Uh, yeah uh, and yeah, like, and funny. to the point where he's he's not, you know, confidently approaching new clients that are asking about freshwater stuff. Uh, huh. And for him, it's just a, a matter of the, the confidence to know that, you know, what he knows is applicable. Mm-hmm. Huh. Minus a few things, and, and you know, add on a couple things. Now, I'm I'm assuming it's more freshwater but like what ratio would you say freshwater to salt water you have with your clients that entirely depends on who the person is that's the company owner and what their interest is i used to do a lot of reef aquariums like way back time like i've been at this since before the advent of like the common protein skimmer so mm-hmm. it's and, and google and the internet <laughs> yep um so <sighs> All right. What was the question? I'm old. Okay. I forgot. Yeah, that's that, that's <laughs> that's fair. Um, so, what's what would you say? Like, oh, the, what percentage fresh oh, water to salt water do you yeah, deal I'm, with? I've I've been actively in the last two three years moving more into fresh water. Mm-hmm. Um, although salt water is a bigger interest of mine, mm-hmm. retiring is a bigger interest. And, <laughs> and I can hire and train somebody to maintain a freshwater aquarium well at like what would be considered a professional level mm-hmm. much easier than I could a fresh fo- or a reef aquarium. Mm-hmm. You know, saltwater fish tanks really from my perspective aren't that much more difficult than a freshwater tank to maintain. Uh, but the reef aquariums or the live planted aquariums, I've stopped doing live planted aquariums altogether. Yeah. Uh, I just find them so fiddly and the customer's, for whatever reason, aren't often in a position or willing to, you know, pay what our, our rates are. Mm-hmm. Uh, so anyway, okay. so for me right now, like I've been actively pushing into freshwater. So I would say probably we're 60%, 70% freshwater now. Okay. But from, now, a, but hold on from a, from a, okay. like a service company point of view, yeah. You also need to take into consider the value of the service that you're providing and what it costs Mm -hmm. the client and really is the extra cost of having a saltwater aquarium for them a limiting factor. And generally speaking, if you live in a four or five million dollar house, that extra cost isn't an issue, (laughs) a big issue. And the Mm -hmm. service person's fees, honestly, is not going to be that much more. Mm-hmm. to service a 150-gallon freshwater aquarium or 150, like a simple 150-gallon saltwater aquarium. It'll be a little bit more, but, you know, it's it, it kind of comes down to the dollars and the cents and the value for the customer. Yeah. The, the saltwater aquariums with the, you know, the characters and the colors of the fish are, mm-hmm. uh, you know, certainly very popular. Yeah, no, definitely. Now, one thing you said too, you know, down to the dollars and cents. Now, 
for me, like if I was debating doing this, the biggest thing I would struggle with is how do you know what to charge? Like how, how do you figure out, okay, this tank cost me this much per visit or I want to make this much per month or week by weekly visitor type of thing. Like how do you figure out what to charge or what it costs? Yeah. It's a good question. That's like probably the most common question that I get asked by anybody that's looking at doing this. Mm -hmm. Um, and it comes back to what I talked about earlier is business numbers. Mm -hmm. Figure out what it costs you to realistically what it costs you to perform that service, right? So figure out if you weren't doing the service, how much is it going to cost you to hire somebody to go as an employee to go and do that service? So if you're paying somebody what fifteen dollars an hour, eighteen dollars an hour, mm -hmm. how long is it going to take them to maintain that aquarium? what's the drive time going to be? So what's their total, you know, wage going to be? And then yep. every, everything to do with it, how much is the gas going to cost? How much is the wear and tear on your car going to cost? And look at all of your direct expenses, the variable expenses of performing that service. Mm -hmm. How much do you need to make if you have your client over here and then the next client is 45 minutes away? Yeah. What if it was just around the corner? Mm -hmm. You know, there's a, as far as wages and wear and tear on cars, like a tenth the kilometers, it's a tenth the wages. So mm -hmm. figure out, always factor in how much it would cost to actually pay somebody to, to do the service. That's a starting point and mm -hmm. not just the time spent on the ground on site. Uh, mm -hmm. And then, you know, after all of your direct variable expenses are paid, how much do you need to make to cover the, uh, the fixed costs? So mm -hmm. insurance, your yep. insurance, your car insurance, uh, your, your bills, your cell phone, your hydro and whatever, if you're paying rent somewhere, those all mm -hmm. need to get co covered as well, which comes into, you know, it, how much money do you need to make in yeah. total and then you've got to work it back to how many billable hours you have so anyway it's a big business equation most service companies will come in uh you know anywhere from 50 to 100 dollars an hour so there's a big okay. range and mm -hmm. when you're just starting out obviously you got to eat and put food on the table you're not going to have the uh, um you know the, the authority or the reputation to demand mm -hmm. higher prices yep and uh, so, you know, you'd be closer to the lower end of the scale or, you know, if you've got something unique that you can do, mm -hmm. uh, you can charge according, accordingly for that. So I don't know if that okay. was like a, like a simple so that, answer. Simple answer. It, it's not. it makes sense, right? You, you need to figure out what your costs are to truly know what you need to make off of it, right? So it does make sense. And a lot of people don't probably consider the driving time and, you know, how much gas is it, how much insurance, all that jazz. So it's other stuff that you definitely need to take into consideration. Yep. And the supplies. And we charge more, like if for weekly clients, bi-weekly clients, four-week clients, we charge mm -hmm. different rates for each of them. If somebody's okay. uh, a weekly client, they're paying mm -hmm. less per hour than somebody that's every four weeks because... You know, the, the every four week client, it's just not as lucrative a contract. That makes sense. And, uh, you know, I think it's uh, a matter of just, you know, service the tank less and it costs less money. Well, it's yeah. more work for us. Mm -hmm. so. Well, exactly right. Because you could do lots of little services rather than like one massive one every month. And then you're also getting more business. So you give them a bit of a deal to keep everyone happy and keep things rolling. Mm -hmm. Nice. Okay. So now if someone wants to do this, what would be like, how would you go about finding kind of your first customers or how would you figure out getting started? Get started on Google as soon as you possibly can, mm -hmm. but don't want to expect anything to come out of it for a long time. Yeah. Like months or, you know, a year. Like we now like using our like, pretty much any of the common search terms you can think mm -hmm. in our geographic area. We usually come up, we're like float around in the top three spots in Google. And that took probably four years to get there. Yeah. Uh, I was on the first page for, you know, within a couple of years, but 
it's uh, you know at the top spot but it's, it's a with google it's a it's a waiting game mm-hmm. um so get started on it but don't expect anything from it so your other avenues to start off you got to think you have like zero experience like professional mm-hmm. experience you have no reviews you have no credibility work on that first yeah so get out there like you know talk to your friends if you've got aquarium related friends see if you mm-hmm. can do something for them for free just help a buddy out yep. but what you want in return ideally is photo ops mm-hmm. you know they've got a nice tank or they've got some cool fish you can take some photos of uh or before and afters if you've got a friend with a tank that sucks <laughs> yeah offer them to fix it up and make it look nice for free mm-hmm. for a for a testimonial yeah start getting those out there put them out on uh, social media and whatnot um and just you know have it put it on the website because you what happens on google with your website is that you can direct people to the website immediately Mm -hmm. but you're not going to get the search uh optimization for a long time so yeah your 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 website is basically your brochure Mm -hmm. uh but to start out with, you need to have a website that looks like you're actually working and doing stuff. So you got to do some stuff if you don't have this already set up. And most people just starting thinking about starting into this won't. So mm-hmm. you can offer and get on a local Facebook group. Yep. And just put it like a like a you know a personal note. Say, hey, I'm looking at doing this. I need some experience and whatnot. Have you got any little projects I can work on? Mm-hmm. Uh, or are you going on vacation? You need somebody to take care of your aquarium fish sit. You know, yep. I won't charge you anything or I'll charge you a small amount just to, mm-hmm. you know, pay for gas or whatever in exchange for a testimonial when I do the awesome job. Yeah. And if you don't do the awesome job. <laughs> there goes your testimonial. <laughs> yeah, don't, don't even ask. And you have to be yeah. comfortable with that in yourself. And that's mm-hmm. kind of how I gauge. I'm going to tangent it's actually how i gauge right now like staff and Mm -hmm. and just customer service in general is if i were to ask this person for a review on google today what would they give me yeah you know and if 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 it's not a five-star review i actually make notes like Mm -hmm. what what can i do to get this person to give me a five-star review like what's what's lacking Mm -hmm. Uh, Makes sense. Yeah, it's anyway. So, um, it's it is hundred percent. Like if if I'm buying something or I'm looking at stuff, I hundred percent just go through and read all the reviews. So they are really important. And like you said, getting on Google, um, even submitting your company to Google My Business, right, will help you get on the map and help you get all that other stuff, which inevitably helps you build up your business long term. Mm-hmm. And there's actually something that I just stumbled on. This is just kind of related side note. Uh, through Google My Business, they have a, there was a little thing, I just clicked on it, it said website, mm-hmm. and it just makes oh, yeah. a little website based mm-hmm. on your information that you've put in in your Google My Business, and I didn't yep. do anything with it. Mm-hmm. Like, I just clicked on it, and I said, publish. Like, all the <laughs> fonts are crazy, and it's like, there's like no information other than I copied and pasted a paragraph from my homepage. Mm -hmm. And then it populates itself with all of the posts that you put up. Hmm. And I just like literally just like not in in the last week. Well, easiest website ever. But think Mm -hmm. about it. It's on the Google platform. Yep. I was just running like an SEO search Mm -hmm. like just last week. And page four, there's this bloody company using my (laughs) company's name. Dun, dun, dun. Yeah. And I clicked on it. <laughs> and it was me. <laughs> it you're was ready to go find Google, this guy. You're like, oh, that was me. <laughs> it was this Google website that I clicked mm-hmm. on and uh, just didn't put any thought into it. Mm-hmm. And it was ranking on page four in three weeks. Yeah. And I don't know if it, you know, has some way of, you know, collecting algorithm information or whatever, or like Google magic mm-hmm. um, from like the existing business or whether it's totally separate, but uh, yeah, it was a, it was an eye opener that, you know, 
page four in three weeks is like like crazy. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, the the Google My Business thing is an important thing to do. Just like I do a lot of web design stuff, or I have in the past, and it's definitely an important chunk to do with it. Okay, so just starting out, uh, some things you can do yep. to get going. Um, so build a little bit of a reputation. Get some testimonials. Get some photos from friends or family or people on Facebook groups. Mm-hmm. Put, put an ad on on Craigslist in yep. the services. Uh, like average, like you want to get stuff that goes out immediately. Mm-hmm. So uh, in Canada is Kijiji. I think uh, in the states, Craigslist is more popular. Any kind of classified yep. website where somebody would advertise a service, mm-hmm. and uh, just put out a an ad saying, you know. Aquarium services, uh, if you are capable of moving aquarium systems, mm-hmm. you will get a lot of responses. Really, eh? Fairly quickly. Uh, yeah, it's from our classified ads, that's the number one response is people looking for somebody to move their aquarium. Huh. And nobody yeah. likes doing it. I hate doing it. I would agree. But <laughs> It's a pain. <laughs> But when you, you charge, you know, for me and one other person and their bill for the, at the end of the day is $1,500, mm-hmm. it's, uh, I, I hate doing it. I hate delivering RO water as well. So I just charge accordingly. Yeah. You know, I, I kind of have to do it, but, mm-hmm. uh, you know, and the people with the RO water say, look, I can put an RO thing in your basement, then you can make your own or I can deliver it and be, there's the bill. Uh, yeah. And it's not cheap. No, because I got to carry it up a set of stairs. <laughs> yeah, I it, it is one hundred percent having one there. It just makes your life so much easier. Now, for fifteen hundred bucks to move a tank, a thousand bucks in a day, it, it almost makes it worthwhile. As painful as it is, <laughs> well, it is. And when you're starting out, you're going to get mm-hmm. calls for that when you don't get calls for anything else. Mm-hmm. And I would highly recommend focusing on inbound moves. So mm-hmm. advertise in the communities out around where you are. Mm, makes sense. Uh, so that hopefully people will pick up your ad that are moving into your city as opposed to out yep. of your city. Because mm-hmm. if they're moving out of your city, that's the last time you're going to hear from them. So if they're yep. moving local inside the city or if they're moving into the city, and almost everybody that I've moved their aquarium, I've mm-hmm. been back for at least one or two other jobs and yep. some of them actually have become regular maintenance clients. Mm-hmm. Nice. Well, it's a good way to get new customers. Yeah, it, it is. And it, it's actually early on, I focused heavily on moving aquariums. I actually bought a bunch of heavy equipment that I've just in the last year sold to an aquarium fabricator here mm-hmm. so that they can move their aquariums around. Yeah, and uh, that was it was a big investment. But when you're just starting out, mm-hmm. all you need is tons of buckets. So yeah. if you're not using salt that comes in a bucket now, start using a salt that comes in a bucket, or you can buy a bucket for four bucks. <laughs> uh, mm-hmm. But I just did a move. I think it was this past weekend, mm-hmm. and the guy had five aquariums in his basement, and mm-hmm. he was moving. Uh, I don't know, like an hour down the road. But, uh, yeah, there was, you know, a ton of buckets, a lot of moving water. Oh, yes. Uh, and, uh, yeah, so lots of buckets, uh, basic hand trucks and dollies uh, and some moving blankets. And you're pretty much set. And don't buy any of this stuff until you get the first job. Take a deposit. Mm-hmm. Uh, I charge a $300 deposit on any move that we need a truck because I just rent the truck. Yeah, and if I'm going to go through the process of calling the rental, like they can't change the date, mm-hmm. um, and get a deposit on moving jobs because they often change the date because the house didn't close or the movers didn't pick up the piano or something. Something. Yep. All right. So, so that's okay. You just said you rented a truck. So I saw earlier in the comments they were like, "Oh, you need a truck." So you don't need a truck to mm, do this business. No. Uh, here I have some opinions on that. When I started <laughs> doing this. Mm-hmm. Working for the other company, they had a little pickup truck, like a Ford Ranger, I think it is, something yep. like that, with a cap on the back. And they had two service vehicles. The service vehicles for the day-to-day service work were uh, Toyota Yaris hatchbacks. Really? So you can you can 
like day-to-day maintenance work you can do in a subcompact hatchback. Uh, nice. I see all these guys online that have got these big gas guzzling pickup trucks. I used to drive a big van, and mm-hmm. one of my gas bills for the month were topping out at six, seven, eight hundred dollars. Uh, I started looking at some little cars, and I, I actually bought a Nissan Cube. Mm-hmm. Which is a very cute car, uh, Devin. You saw it with the little. Did you see yep. one that had all the Nemo's on the side? And yeah, no, I had that one. I was down there last. And, uh, yeah, yeah, I'd ago. probably still yeah. be driving it if it uh, if it started when I pushed the button every time. <laughs> still didn't fix that. <laughs> no, I looked into fixing it. It was going to be yeah. like a almost two thousand dollar repair. Uh, well, oh wow! Plus, plus the other stuff that was wrong on a car with two hundred thousand miles on it. Mm-hmm. So anyway, uh, and now I drive a, uh, a Mazda 5, which is basically just a, you know, a, a station wagon. Yeah. Uh, nice. And what I do, because these are work vehicles, is I have the dealer take the back seats out completely. Mm-hmm. And then I have what I call the pickup trunk. Okay. Uh, so it gives you a that little works. bit of interior room. And mm-hmm. the only real downside with a smaller car is if you're delivering a lot of RO water, mm-hmm. You have to schedule your appointments based on the amount of water weight you can put in the um, car. Um, so I tend yeah. not to do uh, do those ones more, first. More than <laughs> yeah, I don't do well. It's I can't do more than one in a day if it's a big tank. Mm, true. So anyway, that's a little bit of a, a bummer, but uh, yeah, the insurance costs <laughs> yeah. are cheaper. The mm-hmm. all of the bits and gas parts, is cheaper. Yeah. And I have an aquarium in the mechanic shop, and I get all my mm-hmm. tires for free. Nice. And uh, <laughs> yeah, so well, I should say in exchange for a lot of algae scrubbing. Yeah. Uh, anyway, hey, yeah, that's a great relation tra- to have. And, if, you, if you can trade services, is always a good way to go. Yeah, especially okay. if you want to avoid tax. Now, yes, <laughs> there's a question. Uh, around moving a tank. How do you guarantee clients livestock when moving a tank? Uh, I used to. I don't anymore. Uh, mm-hmm. Mostly because I don't care if I get the job or not. Uh, yeah. So, you, other than one Antheus, in all honesty, mm-hmm. we've never lost a significant fish in mm-hmm. 10 years of doing this. Nice. Uh, now that takes a little bit of doing. Like I come in with like tons of buckets, and I put in like if they've got you know we'll have bins or totes or things that we can move that have heaters, uh, and I've got these like big air pumps with like twenty outputs. Mm-hmm. So I just drop an air stone in each of them while we're doing the the move, and then that all goes into the front of the truck if it's uh, like a. a like a cube truck or a bigger truck. Mm-hmm. And I just, I have an inverter that I hook up to the battery. Yep. And run so just air bubblers and all the fish buckets and. Yeah. And I was just recently, which I don't know why I didn't think about this before. I started using these electric blankets mm-hmm. that you can plug into a cigarette lighter. Oh, nice. So in the, in the vehicle, uh, you can get a few degrees of extra warmth just by sitting all the buckets on top of the, you know, piece of styrofoam and then I put down the electric blanket, piece of plastic. Mm-hmm. And, nice. uh, That's a good and, way to do it. Yeah. I've got a remote thermometer and some of the, some of the tanks are easier to do. Like African cyclic tanks are the best because they really don't, <laughs> it doesn't really <laughs> affect them seemingly. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I mean now there's no guarantees and uh, if you're moving a tank, I wouldn't guarantee that. I would just kind of focus on what you're providing versus Mm -hmm. the guarantee Uh, because shit happens. Mm -hmm. You know, if they, if you get delayed somehow, you get in like a, if you get in an accident or what have you, uh, Mm -hmm. mostly I find that people, when they find like kind of a quote unquote professional company that's willing to move their aquarium, they're happy about that. (laughs) Hard to find someone to move it. Yeah, and I mean, if it's a real big, like a real big disaster, mm-hmm. I have insurance. Hmm. That's fair. But if you've, there's only been one Antheus out of, you know, 10 plus years, that's pr- pretty good. So it's really not that big of an issue. It makes for a lot of work. Mm-hmm. But 
you know, people have these tanks generally because they love their livestock. Yeah, and it's true. you know, I do it everything depends. I can to to respect that. Yep, and uh, you know, that's all that anybody realistically can can ask. Mm -hmm. But some people aren't so realistic. What's okay, what's the furthest slash longest move you've had to help someone with? Have you done any mm. outside of the city? Like, have you went? Yeah, I don't really distance. like. It's a different. That's a different thing altogether. Mm -hmm. uh, because you got to take, you got to move the livestock separately from the system. Mm -hmm. So I have a couple of times and it's uh, hellish expensive for the, the client is we take all the livestock, put them in holding tanks in our office, mm -hmm. pack up all the aquarium stuff, crate up the aquarium and give it to the movers. Mm -hmm. And then we you know, fly or same day delivery of the livestock to another aquarium service company in whatever, whatever okay. town there. So it gives them time to get the tank set up, get it running. Yep. And then we just ship, you know, it'd be like ordering a bunch of fish from, uh, from live aquaria or wherever. Mm -hmm. This is an interesting question. Uh, so Seth also does aquarium maintenance. He goes, how do you address customers when you're picking up the pieces from another service provider? Oh my God. AKA someone else sucked or you're taking over or something along those lines. Yeah. Or how about the box outlet pet store? Those are the best. Yeah. Uh, they just sell <laughs> them whatever they happen to have on the shelf or whatever the highest margins are. Absolutely. Yeah. No regard for what the most appropriate um, thing is. And it kind of, I mean, to answer the question directly, it kind of depends on how much you want the client. Um, mm -hmm. uh, you know, you can continue limping along what they have and just charge them by the hour. If mm -hmm. you've got a system that's going to take you longer to maintain, then yep. tell them that. If mm -hmm. you have a, a system that's, you know, have a, a fellow that uh, had a, a big tank, like 200 gallon, 210 gallon reef tank that another aquariums company set up on two FX5 filters. Yeah. And I basically told the client on the first visit that, you know, your, your aquarium has been handcuffed by these filters and the fact you have no overflow. So, you know, we can carry on with what you've got here. Mm -hmm. Or if you're really dedicated to having this, you know, nice, healthy reef, we're going to make some changes. Yeah. <laughs> Which include either one of those hang on back overflows in here i'll tell you right now those hang on back overflow boxes and anybody that's using them there's basically two kinds of people that are using them people that have just started using them mm -hmm. and haven't had a flood and then there's the people that have started using them and have had a flood You're, they're going to back up eventually mm -hmm. um, and when you're dealing with somebody else's floor and uh, and you make them do it proper Okay, so speaking sure of taking it, it's not worth it. Like yeah. I, did okay. I did I did I actually answer the question, or did I just I think, start rambling about something? No, I think I think you did. Oh, That's it's like, uh, yeah. So I'll do what I can to suggest whatever. Like this guy with the FX fives, he's mm -hmm. still running the tank. The, mm -hmm. Eventually, it crashed. Like all of really? his coral died, and he's one of the guys okay, that has all his own maintenance stuff because he goes out and just willy nilly buys stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's part of his hobby and that's fair, but you know, I have to take that into account as far as what we're doing with the aquarium. And, uh, I guess that's harder too, when you can't add or control the stuff that's going on to it, right. To maintain it. And you're like, no, that one's garbage. Let's do this. But you know, they're the ones pushing for all that stuff. So that could be a bit of a tricky one. It is. Um, I do what I can to kind of steer people in my direction. Mm -hmm. Most people listen. Some people don't, uh, and that's mm -hmm. fine. That's their prerogative. You know, they're paying you whatever per service or per month. If that's what they want to do, you're giving them your best advice, and that's what they're paying you for. Mm -hmm. uh, then, you know, you got to let them do it. And that's just customer service in general. I mean, if it really angers you and, like, you think that they're being irresponsible, then you can fire them. Yeah, uh, just don't 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 service their tank. Don't deal with them. Uh, Fire I've the been, bad customers. I've been I've been actually tempted to call like the animal control really people a few times because I've seen some stuff that that absolutely is deplorable. 
and they don't care. Really? Yeah. 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 It's, uh, and especially yeah, like, there's one, there's one actually not far from where I live. It's a Chinese restaurant. And, uh, mm. it's, I feel so sorry for the fish that they have that have the misfortune of being purchased by, by them. Yeah. Yeah. So. I see some, and it's like this massive fish in this tiny tank and it can't even like move in there. You're just like, yep. Okay. So a minute ago, you're talking about like the big box stores and taking advantage of this kind of shocked me, but in the chat, someone's saying one of the ones that they've done or Seth was saying they had a protein skimmer on a discus tank. Mm. Zero idea they're talking about, or they're just trying to sell or anything like that. It's crazy. I have. I actually came into a tank. It was a, a reefer, a big one of the bigger reefers at the time. This mm -hmm. was a few years ago, and they had a protein skimmer in there, and they had African cichlids in it. And then I found out that they actually set up originally as a saltwater tank, and then they just kept running the protein skimmer because <laughs> it made it? bubbles. No, it, just, <laughs> it made bubbles. So it's huh. putting oxygen into the water like you can't beat the band, Fair. right? And Crazy. I actually just shrug my shoulders and like, okay, whatever. Um, but whatever floats your bubbles. Yeah, well, you want to know what I found? What? This tank, these fish were pro producing so much gook, it was mm -hmm. actually taking stuff out. It actually worked on freshwater. I was cleaning the protein skimmer in a freshwater aquarium. No. I'm amazed, to be honest. I didn't think it would even be able to make enough bubbles to do the job. I was amazed too, but I think it had more <laughs> to do with the fish poo that was in the yeah. system. Uh, but anyway, it's gone now, and we've redone the, the filter. Crazy. Over. Yeah, it's now a tropical, just a topical like rainbow fish tank now. Yeah. Ah, craziness. Um, what else we got? So, okay, this is a kind of a little bit of plug, but going down the rabbit hole for you, because now you're actually going to do kind of a course for anyone that was seriously interested in starting down the maintenance path. So, yeah. Ooh. I've been kind of like all through COVID trying to mm -hmm. figure out something like it dawned on, like I did, as I said, I did a lot of kind of reinventing my business and rethinking my business and mm -hmm. uh, actually started into doing like a whole new business plan or five-year plan and looking at redesigning or doing a new website and I'm like, you know what, this, all this stuff is pretty useful. Mm -hmm. And I also, Devin, I told you this, this story a long time ago when I was in high school, like way long time ago, um, in the back of one of the, the fish magazines, there was always this little classified ad that was fishes to riches mm -hmm. and, you know, order this thing. And, um, and they'd mail it to you because there was no internet. Um, and uh, it was basically just a business plan for starting an aquarium service company. Yeah. So I bought that in high school. I ordered it. They mailed it mm -hmm. to me. And yeah. I since got back in touch with them and said, hey, this is like years ago as well, but there was an internet. And I said, hey, have you got a digital copy of this? So I still have it. Um, oh, really? I look at it once in a while. I'm like, wow, how did, how did this company actually survive? Uh, um, actually, I didn't say that. They were, they were nice <laughs> guys. Um, but in today's age, I mean, everything has changed as far as how you service the customers, how you, like everything, how you invoice mm -hmm. the customers and whatnot. So anyway, um, yeah, this has been a long time coming. I've had like two, three other careers since I bought that little thing, but it was always in the back of my head for like yep. literally 40 years. Uh, and I'm like, wow, if I had taken this and actually done something with it 40 years ago, mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> my life would be very different. Uh, so yeah, and through all of this kind of restructuring through the COVID twiddling my thumbs times, mm -hmm. uh, I was trying to figure out how to, uh, you know, let other people know. I've met a few people over the years that are interested in starting this. A couple people have, mm -hmm. and that's kind of cool. Mm -hmm. and, uh, yeah, so in January, I'm starting like a live 12-week, um, and here I'm going to get over this right now. It doesn't yeah. cost anything. Free. Yeah. There's it's a solid almost price. No, there's almost right. no cash. Uh, <laughs> anyway, yeah, so I'm just basically bottling up a lot of the stuff I've done over the last six months and, uh, and just putting it out there for people to learn more. Uh, 
the criteria, the, what is it? Criteria though. Um, and not just wanting to, you know, have people participating that are, uh, you know, just doing it for entertainment. I'm like yep. looking for people that are either very close to like registering their business with the government or people that just have like people that are actually boots on the ground mm -hmm. doing this. And uh, hopefully over the course of a few months, we can have a little group of people that actually come out of it with like a fledgling successful little biz business. No, that's uh, pretty awesome. So anyway, I don't know if that really covered it. It does. So you can check. Yeah, go ahead. If you are seriously thinking about doing this as an actual career or, you know, you're in an, in a place where you have the abilities to actually start up a company or you want to do this. But yeah, if you're actually serious about it, Chris, you're going to do it absolutely for free course just to like help get this people going on it and take them through what they actually need to know to turn to a proper legit business. Yeah, you can basically go through the whole thing uh, and you, mm -hmm. it's said for free. I have mm -hmm. business resources mm -hmm. that I'm going to sell, but you don't need any of them. You just listen yep. to everything. We got, we'll have group discussions and everybody can figure out their own issues mm -hmm. uh, and, uh, and, and how to do it. Like everything, everything here is, is like you can do everything we're going to talk about for very, very little investment. And that's yep. one of the what's one of the awesome things about the aquarium service business in general, is that it doesn't take really a lot, especially for like an advanced hobbyist to get into it because you've already mm -hmm. got eighty percent of the tools that you're going to need. It's true. If you've got a car, that's like literally ninety five percent of everything. <laughs> you're gonna need. Yeah, uh, um, you don't need a truck, although you know if, if you kind of like me and you make a mess of it everywhere and you don't throw anything out, having the extra space is. Uh, probably nice uh, yep. but anyway it's kind of a work in progress uh, so hence me kind of fumbling describing it because I had in all honesty other than the fact that it's 12 weeks um, and there's a little bit of an outline that's yep. pretty much where we're at mm -hmm. and I guess the next question is where do they go uh, I have a website it's aquariumservicebusiness.com yep. it's pretty simple and it's also in the video description, which I just added it, so easy to find. So yeah, and there's also a. Uh, I also started a like just very recently. I haven't done anything with it, a Facebook group for people that are interested in just talking about like starting up these aquarium service businesses mm -hmm. um, or their own aquarium service business. So f nice. I figured, you know, getting people together and talking. Like I see all the Facebook groups out there for aquarium stuff, and every once in a while, somebody will put out a put up a post saying, Hey, I'm thinking about starting an aquarium service business. And, uh, they, you know, they get all kinds of like crazy, uh, uninformed responses. And I figured, mm -hmm. well, we'll just start a group where everybody's on the same page yep. uh, and actually get some real and valuable information. For so the people. what's the group called to actually find it? Oh, I don't know. Uh, there's a link, <laughs> there's a link on the website. <laughs> <laughs> okay, perfect. So I think it's a start an aquarium business company. Yeah, just go to the website okay. and there's like three options. <laughs> okay. Uh, one of them is to read some articles, which in all honesty, I've been hacking, like knowing that this thing's coming up on Wednesday for the last week or two. I've been like seriously just hacking things together. I'm happy to uh, inspire that motivation. <laughs> so yeah, Devin is my, uh, my first little, uh, I guess, announcement that it's happening. Beautiful. Cracking the whip. Anyway, so, and so. yeah, as far as getting involved in like the the twelve week program, the AA. Mm -hmm. AA, yeah. Aquarium <laughs> Academy. <laughs> uh, yeah. yeah, I have a whole list of notes here we were supposed to talk about and we didn't really talk about any of it other than the first <laughs> two. Uh, so if people are looking for more and you can there's also a link to my email, just email me questions, whatever. Uh, it's all good. And Beautiful. Yeah. So what are we, like an hour? You're going to cut this off. Oh, we're good. YouTube's being super flaky today, actually. I've heard lots of people saying it's cutting a note. So I'm, I'm really hoping that because it records it as you're doing this for the replay. So I'm really hoping that's pristine and good and not experiencing the YouTube flakiness. If not, I'll have to lure you on again. But I'm hoping everything will be good for the, the replays after. Okay. All right. So you got any other questions there? Uh, I think we covered most of it for now. 
But oh. if people do want to learn more and they are actually serious and not just, you know, eh, maybe if you're actually serious about it, check out the website. And yeah, yeah. aside from that, here, it was here. a good chat I'm gonna today. Throw, I'm going to throw this out. Um, yep. If you're thinking about doing this, there's a book called The E-Myth Revisited. Mm-hmm. Duke's <laughs> love. He's excited Duke about loves the book. It. Yeah. Um, the E-Myth Revisited. It's basically, it's a really simple, easy read. And it's basically taking for exactly this. It's like taking, mm-hmm. you know, you're the technician. It's taking the mechanics of doing something mm-hmm. and what the steps are to turn it into an occupation. And it's like kind of like just de facto standard go-to book for pretty much everybody starting any kind of service or local local business. Mm-hmm. And uh, and yeah, beauty. Okay, other That's question cool. in the comments: Is setting up a tank, including rockscaping, a thing? Do you ever set up a tank from scratch for somebody? Oh yeah, like right from yeah. scratch, right from like panels of glass. Everything. Uh, yeah, and when I when I actually uh, do an estimate or a proposal, mm-hmm. it's it's not for it's not a list of, it's not a shopping list for them. It's mm-hmm. like you know. I give them a list of the high points. It's like, you know, this tank, what the features of the tank are, um, you know, efficient protein skimmer, filter system. Like, I just give them very general, and then I give them a total price mm-hmm. for the whole system. And that's when people usually have to check their diapers. Uh, because if you think about an aquarium system and all, all that goes into it, and it's if they've lot. been into a pet store and they look at a, you know, a 90 gallon aquarium and it's like whatever, 250, $350 mm-hmm. just for the glass box. And then you're sending them an estimate for $2,000 for this tank that they saw for say $300. Yeah. So yeah, getting over that initial sticker shock, like I kind of start getting them ready for it as soon as <laughs> like our first conversations. Mm-hmm. It's true. There's a lot that goes into it. So, it's good anyway. to calculate what mine costs over the years. <laughs> yeah, and as it builds up slowly, and then you upgrade stuff. You know, you go from a skimmer that costs you four hundred dollars to a skimmer that costs you eight hundred dollars, and you don't really notice it at the mm-hmm. time. I mean, eight hundred dollars kind of sucks, but, but all at once. Oof. Yeah, and yeah, I guess actually just. A couple closing notes is like if you're planning on doing like starting any business, this is not necessarily anything to do with aquariums. It sucks. <laughs> there's there's a lot of uh, there's a lot of work that needs to get done. That's mm-hmm. not fun. It's not aquascaping aquariums and dealing with pretty fish. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's a lot of stuff that you're not gonna probably. It's not gonna be in your wheelhouse. It's not gonna be in like your zone of expertise. And you yeah. got to learn it, and it's not fun. Like a book, bookkeeping for me is like, thankfully I have some help with it now. But uh, mm-hmm. even just getting them the information they need, pulling teeth, yeah, <laughs> and, uh, you know, doing the marketing stuff. I mean, it's kind of creative, but after a while, it gets to be a chore. Um, mm-hmm. Handing out flyers, which we didn't talk about, that's like it's either a lot of work. Or mm-hmm. it's expensive. You can hire somebody to do it, but chances are, if you're just starting out, you're yep. not hiring anybody. Uh, um, and yeah, we didn't we didn't talk about target markets, which is a really important thing. But uh, sounds like I'm gonna yeah, have to lure anyway, you on again. <laughs> just just be prepared to do like the suck. Yeah, uh, it's not all about you know keeping a pretty fish tank. It's mm-hmm. uh, th- there's there's actually some work involved yeah. in it in order the 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 fish tanks and the aquarium services that you provide they're the mm-hmm. product yep what you're actually starting is a, a marketing company mm-hmm. or an accounting company or a sales consulting company like you, you need to view it as you know your marketing company happens to provide aquarium services mm-hmm. because for the first little while say you have two hours or Let's say, let's make it easy, seven hours a week to dedicate to this business. Mm-hmm. You're dedicating seven hours a week to the business. If you're not scrubbing algae for seven hours that week, you're mm-hmm. doing something else that's related to the business. Early on, it's likely going to be marketing of some yep. sort. And uh, just just keep that in mind that it's, you know, it's not, 
you, you need to separate yourself from the hobby for a lot of the the business stuff, especially during the startup phase, because it's uh, it's not an easy go, and uh, you can count on having to have conversations with family and friends about why you're not hanging out or doing stuff. So mm. anyway, well, that's kind of the the downside of being self-employed or a business owner. Yeah, that's well, probably it's, all. It's, it's kind well, of fun for me, so but my wife doesn't good. like it very much. <laughs> that's fair well i'm willing to guess most people watching this already have the basics aquarium down and what they're lacking is all the business aspects of it which is the big unknown for most people yeah. going down this venture yeah and that's the danger right because people think mm -hmm. that uh, and you think about anybody with a job that you do something and you know in the back of your head you're thinking about the relationship between you and the owner of the business and it's like i can do this job better than than you can his job is not to do the job. His job is to keep you employed, which mm. includes taking care of the books, which includes marketing and sales and, you know, relationships with different businesses. So no. uh, keep, keep the, uh, you know, keep the business in the forefront and mm -hmm. continue learning. I mean, you always have to continue learning about the subject that you're doing. So continue learning about the aquariums, which for anybody listening to this, that's not going to be a big problem. Yeah, but you got to tear. You got to tear. <laughs> sorry, Devin. I know you're not going to like this, but you got to tear your way, yourself away from some of the uh, the fish related YouTube channels, and yes. start listening to some some business business influencers <laughs> or business experts. And mm -hmm. I find when I'm driving around, I do a lot of that on podcasts. Yeah, I download a lot of podcasts and uh, listen to them. Ebooks on business. Mm -hmm. Nice. But no, so anyway, that's not the. <laughs> that's not the fun part of it, but uh, but I have that's a fun a, job. No, that's awesome. Well, at the end of the day, that's what matters. Like, do you do you enjoy your job? Right? Does it you know does it feel like work or is it you know is it fun? Ninety percent. Ninety percent. That's pretty good odds. Yeah, I like it. I see somebody say it's uh, YouTube broken. Yeah, YouTube's there's like a massive outage for YouTube. It's super flaky right now, apparently. Oh, awesome. How dare, how dare they break on a live stream day? Ay, ay, ay. <laughs> All right, Chris, I appreciate you coming on today. Um, yeah. Just again, link in the description, uh, aquariumservicebusiness.com, I believe it is. But, yep, yep, that's the right one. Um, so link in the description if you guys want to learn more and you are hardcore and want to actually take the plunge. Yeah, and actually, just one other quick thing is the uh, kind of around the, like early in the year, I'm also planning on, as I said, I listen to a lot of podcasts. I'm actually starting, mm -hmm. like, thinking about starting a podcast. So I'm looking for people Good. that are uh, kind of in the throes of getting started in aquarium mm -hmm. maintenance work. Yep. And uh, to have them on as guests or interviewees. Uh, nice. So if anybody's interested in that, uh, just go to the website. There's a link to my email address. And, uh, yeah, I'd love to hear from anybody that's awesome. interested in any of this. Perfect. So anyway, that's the last time I'll say, oh, just one more thing. I'm sure there's one more. What else you got? Nothing. <laughs> okay, I, have a, awesome. I have a whole list in front of me, but uh, I don't think we have time. Don't worry. I'll lure you on again. <laughs> okay. Awesome. So hopefully you guys enjoyed it today. Make sure if you guys are serious about going down this path, check out the link in the description. And otherwise, we will see you guys on next week's live stream. Thanks again for coming.